Hi. If you follow me on YouTube for a while, then you will know that a lot of the videos I normally do are product based. So I'll talk about the specification and how they work, things like that. This video is slightly different, and what I want to do today is to talk about modern washing machines and how they've changed over the years. Now, what I mean by that is I want to give you some hints and tips on modern washing machines and how to use them and things to look out for because we get a lot of customers, especially the elderly generation, uh, who sometimes can be a little bit more difficult to teach and to show how things have changed because some people will come along and say, well, I've been using a washing machine for 30 or 40 years, um, then I should know how to use it. And that is right, you know the operation of the machine, uh, but really this is, I suppose, to show you how things have changed, uh, how washing machines have changed over the years, hopefully for the better. Some of them are not for the better, and again, I'll cover that in a bit. But what I'd normally do is I'd normally say, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, give us a quick thumbs up. Uh, what I do is I'll talk about mainly household appliances, uh, vacuum cleaners, there's normally a bit of tech in there as well. So just give us a quick subscribe and then we'll carry on. So hopefully with this video, what I've done is I've tried to put them in some kind of logical order. Uh, so really the first thing, once you've got your new machine or just before you buy it, uh, then what you want to do is you want to make sure it fits in. Um, and the reason I say that is because a lot of modern washing machines can be a bit deeper. Uh, the standard sizes tend to be around 60 centimeters wide, 85 centimeters high, but the depth of the machine can vary quite a bit. Uh, on this machine here, this is a Hoover 10 kilogram machine, the depth of it is only around 56 centimeters compared to this Siemens 9 kilogram machine, so it's a, a slightly smaller load than the Hoover, but this one is around 62 centimeters deep. So that's something I suppose to look out before you buy the machine. Uh, hopefully you've already measured um, and perhaps taken the old machine out. Now when you first get your new machine, the first thing really to do is to take these out. These are called transit bolts. Um, I won't show you fully how to connect the machine. Uh, hopefully that's a fairly simple process. Uh, but transit bolts are designed to keep the drum steady while it's in transit. Um, but these are imperative to take out. You have to take these out before uh, you even connect the machine. Um, uh, what will happen is if you don't take them out, then uh, when it goes through the washing and the spinning process, then it will damage the machine and it won't be covered under the warranty. So it's just a bit of a warning. Have a look how many there are. Most machines tend to have around four or five bolts. Uh, it is something that I'd normally recommend keeping and the reason I keep them because if you ever move the machine in the future if you're moving house for example then what you want to try and do is try and get the bolts back in uh, because when it's been moved then at least you can keep the drum still when it's in transit so that's really the first thing uh, as far as installing the machine most machines are pretty pretty standard uh, you've got the waste hose at the back here uh, so that just goes into a, a waste outlet um, you've got the water that connects at the top right here on this machine and this is a fairly standard layout. Uh, we always try and recommend using the new hoses because each machine will normally come with new hoses. If you do need to use extendable, so longer hoses, not extendable but extended hoses, um, and if you've already got them say going through cupboards, which some people do, then as a minimum just change the washer in the end. Uh, so take the washer out of the new pipe, pop that in, because what that will do is that will give it a really good seal. So just connect that up, and then once you've got the machine ready and in place, then you're ready to go. So now you've got your machine installed. If a company have done it for you, hopefully what they've done is they just put it through probably a quick program, uh, perhaps a rinse and a spin, uh, just to make sure everything's okay and that all the pipes and everything are connected at the back and there's no leaks. So hopefully they've done that for you. Um, if not, if you've connected it yourself, then I'd normally recommend doing that. Just make sure there's no, no drips or anything, that's always important. So now your machine is connected, you've checked that there's no drips, that's brilliant. What I'd recommend doing now is go and put the kettle on and have a quick read of these. Now these are the instructions. Now I know for a lot of people, it's quite alien reading instructions. I know personally, I'm not a huge fan of reading the instructions, uh, but the reason I'd recommend reading the instructions is because what they would do is first of all it tells you what each of the programs do because on a lot of modern machines you've got quite a few specialized programs uh, that a lot of the time either people don't use because they don't understand what they do 
Also, you don't know the load sizes that you can put into the machine. So for a lot of these programs, okay, some of the cottons and the eco program and the color programs, you can put the maximum load in. But majority of these ones, you can only put probably three or four kilograms in. Now, it's something I tend to recommend. So have a quick read the instructions because what it will do is then there, there should be a chart in there that will give you a guide as to the maximum load you can put in for each program. And what you also want to do is you want to know how economical each program is because you could find that there might be a program on your machine that is a lot more economical so it uses a lot less water and electricity compared to one of the others that you've regularly, regularly been using. What you can find is if you were to select one of these programs, for example, say the, say the shirt program, a standard it will take around an hour and five minutes. So if you were to put a full load in there when it's only designed for say three or four kilograms, then one of two things will happen. Either the machine will realize that it's a full load or it's a much bigger load than it should be and it will take a lot longer to wash. Uh, so whereas your program initially said an hour and five minutes, that could easily double um, or the other thing that will happen is it will take that time uh, but the other problem will be is that the wash performance won't be as good. So either way it can be quite frustrating. So if you have got some prior knowledge as to the, the load that you should be putting into the machine for each program then that should be something that is priority. On some machines, uh, not all of them, but on some machines it will actually give you a recommendation on the screen. Uh, clearly it depends what machine you've gone for or what you're choosing so on here it will show that it's a maximum of two kilograms and on the duvet program that this has a maximum load of two and a half kilograms it says you come around to some of these other programs uh, things like the cotton programs where you've got the maximum load of nine kilograms now before you put any clothes in or before you put anything into the machine with your wash in just check your pockets I know it's something that everybody says they do, um, but it, you know, nothing's changed on that. Uh, we always get people where they've either got coins that have been trapped in, in the machine or uh, it blocks the pump. So that's really the first thing. Just empty your pockets, check them. Uh, I know sometimes if, if the kids are putting the washing on, um, mine are getting to the age where they're starting to use the washing machine. And I must admit, they don't always empty the pockets. Now the next thing to look at is the detergent or the powder that you're going to use within the machine. Now this is quite a hot topic and I must admit I could do a separate video on this because there are so many different options to look at, whether it's powder, liquid, uh, you've got things like the little tablets that people use in the machine or you've got these which are like the little gel pouches. Uh, now there are, as I say, there's so many different options. Uh, there isn't an ideal solution because for some people they tend to like different brands. The only thing we tend to recommend is try and go for a good quality brand of powder or detergent. You can find by paying a bit more that the washing performance is better. Also keep an eye on the clothes that you're washing. Are you happy with the wash performance? If you're not, if you're finding that some of your whites are coming out not quite as white as they should be, then either look at the program that you're using or look at the detergent or the dosing. Uh, dosing is something that again is a almost a video on its own uh, you will find manufacturers uh, of the powders or detergents will give you a recommended dosage uh, now that's something that we do recommend sticking to I know it's tempting to think well uh, you know in a modern washing machine you know I've just put a, a full load in there let's put a bit more put a bit more powder in there or a bit more liquid that's not always the case because a lot of modern washing machines will use a fraction of the water that they did 10, 12, 15 years ago. So the amount of liquid or powder you need is a lot less. Also, if you're using these, so if you're using things like the tablets or especially the gel pouches, um, again, it's something that some people put them in the drawer, some people put them in the machine itself. Uh, again, if you are going to put them in the drawer, then we tend to recommend not using the, the gel pouches because what can happen, is, especially if you're washing at the lower temperatures, say 30 or 40 degrees, then over time you can get a buildup inside and sometimes at the lower temperatures it doesn't always dissolve the plastic as it should do so that's something else to look at you will find there are some machines out there uh, Bosch do a range called IDOS and they are stands for intelligent dosing uh, it's not only Bosch that do it there are other brands as well 
But what that will do is you load a certain amount of liquid into the machine and it will actually dose itself. So that's something that is really, really good because what you'll find is that the amount of liquid and detergent used will be a lot less than standard because it's only taking the amount of detergent required for the wash. The next thing is to load the machine correctly. And what I mean by that is when you put everything in, make sure you can get your hand in like that. This is something that the manufacturers will recommend. So when you put with your clothes in, make sure you've got space to put your hand in on top of the clothes. And why we say that is because what it does is it will allow the clothes to move around within the wash. I know it's very tempting. You've got a whole pile of washing to do and you put everything in there and you're trying to shut the door like that. But all that happens is that the performance of the wash is not going to be as good as it should be. So lots of people know about overloading the machine and what will happen if you overload it. Now, not a lot of people know about underloading it. And this is something that comes up almost daily with some customers. And what you'll find is if you underload the machine, as in you put too little into the machine, then it won't spin properly. A common occurrence is where people get a machine and they go to wash something like the bath mat or a towel or a flannel. It can be an individual item that for some reason people want to wash on its own. And I understand that. But what people need to understand and what manufacturers have come up with now is a feature called out of balance spin control and what it would do and that that terminology varies across different manufacturers but what it would do in a nutshell it will detect the load within the machine and if it can't balance the load then it won't spin so what you'll find is that uh, at the end of the wash it will have it might say 25 minutes and it sticks on 25 minutes and we get customers call up uh, and manufacturers get customers call up saying that my machine won't finish and then once you ascertain the load that's in there and when they're saying they're washing the bath mat or a single item that's the problem so what they need to do is to add extra items into the wash now for another, a lot of people that can be quite frustrating and this is part of the reason for the video that I suppose some old customers say well my old machine used to do it well it probably did do it, but a lot of modern machines won't. Uh, so what you need to do is to add extra items in. So if you are washing your bath mat, you might need to put a couple of towels in as well. And what that can do is that can actually balance the load out and then it can do a full spin. So once you've got the machine correctly loaded, you've got the detergent in there that's correct because you've clearly read the instructions. Then what you need to do is pick the correct program. Now programs on washing machines vary a huge amount. Um, and what I really want to cover are some of the eco programs and some of the rapid programs. Now you will find, and I'll give you a couple of examples. On here, so this is a Siemens machine, this is a popular one that we sell. Uh, you have got several rapid options. So you've got 15 and 30 minute programs. And just here it does show you the, first of all, the time on here and also the load size. So for that machine, that 30 minute program, that's a maximum of four kilograms. Now, with any of these rapid programs, they are designed to wash clothes that are not very dirty in a very quick time. Uh, modern washing machines do take longer to wash. That's a fact. Um, we get a lot of people that do want to wash things quickly. I know people are in a hurry, but what people need to realize is that a lot of proper full washes will take longer to wash. And with things like these rapid programs, they are okay on the odd occasion, but we always recommend, and even manufacturers and service engineers will recommend, don't use them all the time. First of all, the washing performance won't be as good. Full stop. That if you keep using these quick programs, and it doesn't matter whether it's 15, 30 minute programs, on other machines, um, the brand Beko, they do a, a full load in around half an hour. Uh, it is something that you, it's possible, it will do a full load, but the washing performance won't be as good as if you're going to wash at two, two and a half hours. Um, and on this machine, I'll just show you around here, this is a Hoover machine that I've got set up. On here you've got rapid care, so it's 14, 30 minutes, 44 minutes. So they do vary across different brands. Uh, you will find on most machines you have got quick washes. And as I say, they are suitable for smaller loads, normally around two, three, four kilograms. They're not really designed for full loads. 
And then going on to the other end of the scale are eco programs. So you've got on this machine, it's something called eco 40 to 60. Now, a lot of people think eco is going to be economical and quick. A lot of people assume if a wash is quick, then it's using less water. Now with washing machines, on the whole, that isn't the case. Uh, just to give you an idea that on a lot of these machines now, so that's the Eco 40 to 60, and this is a, a new requirement. Let's just come back to the Siemens machine. It has the same program, Eco 40 to 60. You will find it will be on uh, pretty much all, uh, well, it should be on all modern washing machines in the UK. This is a requirement. And this program is designed to wash clothes that are designed to be washed between 40 and 60 degrees. Uh, you will find that the wash time are quite long, so on this machine it's around three and a half hours. Um, but you can wash the full load uh, with this program. But what we normally recommend is try and use some of these longer programs. Um, and I suppose what I do is I, I test it because what you could find is that the, the actual washing performance as you use some of these programs will be a lot better than if you're using some of the Rapid programs. Um, but if you have got things like time delay, so if you've got things like Economy 7, where you've got cheap electricity during the night, then pop it on, pop it on a long wash. You know, whether it takes, say, three or three and a half hours to do a wash, uh, compared to, say, 15 or 30 minutes, then if you're doing it overnight or when you're out, then it doesn't matter. I won't go into a full explanation as to how it does the, the washing and why they take so much longer, uh, but what they normally do is they normally soak the clothes for longer, um, I suppose what you tend to find, and I suppose a good example I tend to use with customers, if you have, uh, say if you've done a Sunday roast, and if you've got a, a pan that's got potatoes stuck to the bottom, what do you normally do? Rather than washing it straight away and really, really scrubbing at it, you put it into soak for a while. So you put some water into the pan, a bit of washing up liquid, and you leave it. And what it will do is it will gradually loosen the, the food in there, and then it just means that when you come back to it, half an hour, an hour later, that it's a lot easier to remove all the food. And it can be a similar concept to in the washing machine. What they will do, rather than rushing it, then it will actually soak the clothes for longer, and it just means that the washing performance is a lot better. Also, have a look at the clothing labels within the clothes that you're washing. Now, I know a lot of people don't tend to do it, uh, but it's something we, we should recommend to do. So these are just an example of some of them. Uh, so what it will do is it will give you a recommended temperature for everything to be washed at. Is it hand wash only? Uh, you will find on a lot of washing machines now, uh, especially on, on some of the better machines, that you have got specialised programmes, things like hand wash, um, or you've got things like woolen programmes, that still are designed to look after the fabric that you're washing. Uh, so just have a, I suppose something else is, do not wash this. You know, is it designed to be washed? Uh, there are some things at the bottom here that's a dry clean only. If that's the case, then don't put it in the washing machine because you can find with some materials, especially some high-end clothes that are, are designed to be professionally cleaned, then you don't necessarily want to put them in your washing machine because it can damage them. Um, other things like look at the, the symbols under here. So you've got things like synthetic washes. Uh, then you've got this one which is only wash on a uh, sensitive or delicate program. So you've got um, quite a few options on the machines nowadays, so just have a look in the clothing label to see where they should be washed at. As far as the other programs on the machines, as I just mentioned, you've got quite a few specialised programs, uh, things like the, the duvet program, the shirts program. Uh, these are programs that we recommend using, um, that's where help reading through the instructions can help. Uh, because some of these specialised programmes, what they do is they will actually wash in a different way that can really, really look after the fabric. So if you're washing things like your shirts or blouses on this programme, then what it does is, first of all, it's a smaller load, but what it does is it actually washes with a, uh, with a lower agitation uh, that can help to protect the fabric. Also, you've got things like anti-crease towards the end of the programme, because the last thing you want is to be doing a, a full load of shirts and then at the end you get them all out and they're all creased. So look out for some of the specialised programmes. On some machines you have got things like Wi-Fi connection, so you've got different apps that you can download. And these, again, they're, they're quite good things because first of all you can uh, download different programmes to the machine 
because if the machine you've got now um, is working okay, uh, but you can find that over the years that things like different programs are available that the manufacturers download to the app, and what you'll find is that you should normally have access to those modern programs. Also, by downloading the app on your phone or tablet, then um, hopefully you've got things like interaction with service engineers. So if there is a fault with the machine, then sometimes the service center should be able to log into the machine to see what the fault is and rectify it that way. Once you've done your load of washing, you've taken it all out. Something that I try and recommend to people, and not everyone does it, is to leave the door open, or at least leave it ajar, and also the soap drawer. Now, what you'll find with this is a common thing with, uh, especially in our area, is that uh, people that have had a machine for several years, you tend to find you've got black around the seal. Now, once it's on there and it's penetrated within the rubber, then it can be really, really difficult to get off. And by leaving the door open at the end of the wash, just to leave it to dry, can make a huge difference. Uh, also, if you can do, then just try and wipe it out with a towel or kitchen roll. Uh, just try and get into the seal here. By doing that, after each wash, then that can make a big difference. Uh, some people immediately shut the door, and what you realise is that after you've done that, so especially if it's still warm and you shut it, you've got water in a warm atmosphere that's all contained. Clearly, over time, that will you'll start to get smell build up, and also you can get like mould around the rubber. I suppose one of my final tips is to register the warranty on the machine. Quite a few manufacturers offer promotional guarantees, so it could be two, three, four, five year guarantees sometimes. Don't forget to register the guarantee. There are several reasons for that. I suppose the first one is if you do have a fault within the guarantee period, then to get the manufacturer out is a much easier process. Uh, sometimes the manufacturers will say it has to be registered within a certain time period. It could be within two weeks or most of the time it's 30 days. There's nothing worse than buying a machine, especially something like this. I mean, this Siemens machine normally comes with a five-year guarantee and then you don't register it because you won't have the guarantee. The other reason to register the guarantee is if there were any things like safety recalls, then the manufacturer will have your details to organise an engineer to come out and sort it out quickly. This is something that quite a few manufacturers um, have had recently, where things like safety recalls on things like tumble dryers, washing machines that are needed, where people need a service call, uh, it could be quite an important safety issue. Uh, because they've got your customer details, then they can contact you and organise an engineer to come around and sort it out quickly. I hope you found the video useful on some of the hints and tips on modern washing machines and things to look out for. Hopefully by watching this video, you might have picked up one or two things. Uh, I know there are things that I've probably missed, uh, but what I'd normally do is I'd normally say please subscribe to my YouTube channel, leave any comments below, and if you have got any other comments, the things that I've missed when talking about washing machines, uh, or other things that you've found when you've got a new washing machine that can be a little bit frustrating, then put it in the comments and uh, I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching.